Okay, welcome to VR. So we're in the metaverse right now, and today what we're going to learn about is how to do programming in virtual reality. So if you can see, I am currently using an Oculus Quest 2 headset, and I am in a Ryokin scene right now. You can see my hands, my controllers, and what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Oculus browser, and we're going to learn about a framework called A-Frame which allows us to create 3D scenes kind of like this um, using uh, HTML markup language. So as you can see, I can move around in this scene right now. I can crouch down. So let's jump into the web browser. So this is the Oculus browser. Um, the page that we're looking at is aframe.io. Aframe is a library that was created by the Mozilla Foundation, the same group that brought us the Firefox web browser. And what we're gonna look at is a few different examples of how to create some 3D content using uh, this library Aframe. So the first example here that we're seeing, I can move it around using my controller. Um, we see basically a very simple scene that has some 3D objects. So we have a plane, uh, we have a cube, we have a cylinder, and we have a sphere, and I can move them around. And they are indeed rendered in 3D using WebGL behind the scenes. And we're gonna be able to jump into VR and actually walk around in this scene. So that's what I wanted to show you. So let's click this VR button down here. And this is using WebVR. So WebVR is a technology that allows us to uh, interface with the APIs that um, the VR headset, the virtual reality headset provides and allows us to be able to um, jump into first person view. So this is effectively what virtual reality is. We're able to see things from a first party uh, perspective and I'm now able to move around in this virtual scene. So if I walk forward, I can actually come here right beside this cube. I can hide behind it. You can see the shadow back here and then there's the sphere and the cylinder. And then I can move back to where I was originally. Um, where I have a, a bigger view of the scene. So this is a very basic scene that was created using A-Frame, and I'm going to show you what that source code uh, looks like. So if I, there's a button here that says view source, but I already have it open here. If I click here, now you can see this is actually the markup. So if you're new to programming and you've at least done some uh, beginner web development content, you've seen HTML markup language. So this is a basic HTML page. So it has in the body section, there are these new tags, a dash scene, which basically uh, creates the, the scene graph. And then we have these different objects that are put in the scene. So we have the box, the sphere, the cylinder, the plane and the sky. So you can see the different parameters, position, which is the XYZ position in 3D space, the rotation, and then the color of the individual objects. And of course, the sky has its own color as well, which is, uh, I believe, a kind of gray. And all this is just done with tags, basically. So it, it's a very high level API, but you can also interface with this with JavaScript, which we're going to see in some other examples here. But this is the very kind of hello world uh, Hello Web VR uh, example from A-Frame. So very easy to, to learn for beginners. Um, and you can just jump in and copy this code and get started with creating content for Web VR. So um, another thing that I want to show is the visual inspector. So if I click on the visual inspector here, we can actually see the scene graph here on the left. And if I start clicking uh, on different elements here. One, you'll notice that now the object is selected. So the outline here uh, of the actual object is selected. And I can also drag um, by using these arrows, just like you would in, in other kind of game engines like Unity. And I can move around the actual scene. So this is pretty cool. So I can actually change the scene interactively with this, what you see is what you get uh, editor. Uh, and then here on the right, I can actually change some parameters. So I can change the scale. So let's say I wanted to scale it in half. So I can just set the scale to 0.5 instead of to one. So now the, the cube has become much smaller and then I can just place the cube here on top of the cylinder, for example if I wanna change up my scene a bit and then I can click on the sphere and then maybe just move the sphere a little bit closer. 
So now I've actually changed the scene. So there's other things, modifications that you can do here. So there's the geometry, the materials. Um, so I can change the color, for example, of these objects. I can also add textures, which we're going to see later. Uh, and then I can change the shadow parameters as well. So this is typical kind of game development stuff that you'll learn, but we're, we're doing it in a very easy kind of um, web-friendly way. Um, you are able to save this uh, scene and be able to export it to a 3D model format called GLTF uh, if you click on this button here. And GLTF is basically a transmission format for 3D uh, objects uh, or 3D scenes. So you can export it and then be able to transfer it over the web in, in an efficient way. So let's just go back to the scene. So this is the new modifications to the scene that I've created. And let's just jump back into VR to see what it looks like. So there you go. So if I now approach here, you can see that I indeed put the cube on top of the cylinder and I did indeed move around the, the sphere. Uh, and it was as easy as that to actually change around and make a scene in, in virtual reality. So uh, very simple using the, the editor, but you can also do this in code uh, pretty easily. Uh, if I click on the uh, menu button on the left, I can now jump back out of the web VR scene. And let's jump into another example. So for example, the model viewer allows us to see 3D models. So this is a 3D model. I can zoom in using the thumbstick and you can see it's a textured model, which just means that there's an image applied over the 3D mesh that creates the body of this um, character. He's also animated, as you can see, his eyes are blinking and his tail is moving. So this is a GLTF model that was loaded, uh, and there is the ability to also copy a URL to a GLTF or GLB, which is the compressed version of GLTF, and just open it here directly. Um, and if I click on VR, now we can actually see the Triceratops up and close. So I can get real close to his eye and see kind of the detail, um, walk around a little bit. Move him around and scale him, maybe. And come up down here. So that looks pretty good. So we are able to leverage this uh, library A-frame through 3D models. So now you can even compose your scene using 3D models. And behind the scenes, what this is using is a library called 3JS. 3JS is a higher level uh, library that wraps around the uh, WebGL library, which is a standard for the web and allows you to be able to create 3D scenes. So A-Frame is an even higher level API on top of that, just makes it a lot easier to create content for AR and VR uh, very easily and, and very quickly. So that was the uh, model viewer. Let's look at the hand tracking example, which is pretty cool as well. So I'm just going to jump the VR uh, and there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my controllers on the floor and then we should be able to see, there we go. So now I have hands in VR using a frame, uh, very quick and easy to do. And now I can push buttons. So you can see that this is indeed interactive. Uh, I can switch to light and dark mode. So now it's nighttime. And if I click on the sphere and then pull on this slider using a pinch, I can make it bigger and I can also make it smaller and equally with the box, bigger and smaller box and then a bigger and smaller torus. So a very fun example to play around with some interactive elements here. Now, of course, this is uh, not just markup. This is also using some JavaScript to script some of the interactive elements here. Again, I can use my hand here and then just pinch to go back. Uh, to my website, and now let me just pick up my controllers again. So why don't we try to view the source for this example? Oh, well, the source doesn't work. Okay. Uh, well, let's go to a different example. So responsive UI. So this is an example of creating uh, UI in VR. So for example, you know, if we're at the movies and we want to select different uh, videos to watch, here's some Studio Ghibli features. And when we click on it, you can see that the background kind of gets um, dimmed down. And then we have the, the focal card that pops up with uh, a description of the movie and an image at the top. 
So very easy to do some animation um, of the cards. So uh, very easy to create a selection UI uh, in VR. And then of course I can move closer to these cards and take a closer look as we are in virtual reality. So let me just recenter, okay. And then let me just out and let's see if we can find the source code for this one. Okay, so here's the source and you'll notice that we still have our scene here, our A scene. And then if we look into the assets, you can see here we are, the different posters. So now we have some image assets that are uh, in there. And then we have these mix-ins that will uh, define like the, the material, the geometry, the animation scale and, and different factors. And that's how we compose the uh, A-frame scene graph in a typical fashion as you would on the web. Uh, but let me click on this UI folder and the info panel. So now you can see here is the actual JavaScript code, which, you know, if you're familiar with JavaScript, this is very typical stuff. Um, we have some of the descriptions for the movies that are stored here. And then we have some but button click um, callbacks that are going to be set up so that when we actually click on the images, we can then uh, change and animate the scene. So some very simple uh, interactive components here. Uh, on showing how we can build a UI using A-Frame. So that was UI. So this is an example of a uh, 360 image. So if we open this in VR, many people are familiar with panoramic images, which you know uh, cover a wider, a wider field of view. So a 360 image uh, actually covers the entire field of view. So if you look up or you look down, uh, all of it should be visible. And there are specialized cameras that can uh, use fisheye lenses to, um, multiple fisheye lenses to capture the entire scene and then stitch them back together. And these really come to life when you're in virtual reality because you have the ability to look around so you can imagine taking some vacation photos uh, somewhere that's very picturesque and, and has a nice landscape and then being able to relive them by um, you know jumping into vr and being able to look around and and of course here you can see there's an overlay of text here very easy to add text overlays or images uh, and kind of use this as a background Additionally, you can also have 360 videos, of course, which are similar. And there you have it. It is 360. That wasn't the most interesting 360 video, but there's a lot of great content, you know, um, on the Oculus, uh, on uh, YouTube or Oculus TV. Um, where you can find some really cool 360 video content. But this is basically just a summary of A-Frame, the library that uh, quickly allows you to compose a, a scene, a 3D scene, and to create things, to add 3D models, to be able to add shapes. Um, as simple as this, you know, just with a few lines of, of markup text uh, and to, you know, do things like 3D, uh, 360 videos or 360 images to create UIs. Um, all is possible just using this the same web technologies that you learn, the JavaScript, the HTML. Uh, you can quickly be able to develop stuff, and you can even make games using this kind of high-level library. So this is a really good way to kind of get introduced to more complex topics in programming. It is a higher-level um, library that kind of abstracts away some of the, the implementation details that are, you know, the, the 3JS and the WebGL behind the scenes, but it allows you to kind of create more advanced things more easily and quickly. And one of the good things about, um, you know, learning to program in this kind of environment is that there's a lot of feedback. So you get to um, create something, see it visually, uh, be creative, and to um, be able to actually step into the creation that you made. So if you made a game or you made a 3D scene, you're actually able to walk around it and, and experience it and be able to show it to people if you have a virtual reality headset. So this is a really fun way to uh, learn how to program. There are, um, you can, you know, use A-Frame for just regular 3D content on the web. You don't actually need a VR headset. And you can also use it for AR if you just use it with your phone. So this is a really good way to 
um, to just, you know, play around with the web technologies and to create 3D content very quickly without having to, to jump in and like have a full on game engine, like something like Unity. So give A-Frame a shot. I think it's a really good way to um, learn about 3D programming um, and to create scenes for virtual reality. Thanks.